My coaching client was pretty unhappy recently. They said, it used to be so easy for me to get a new job. I didn't have to look or try. People came to me. But now, now I'm struggling to get to the final round and I haven't received any offers in over a year. Something has changed. That's what I'm going to talk about in today's episode. Why it's so important to create an intentional career path instead of letting others determine your future. I'm Larry Cornett, and this is Invincible Career. So there are some pretty useful resources that are linked in the newsletter that's associated with this episode. If you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com, this is how to create an intentional career path instead of letting others determine your future, issue 427. Um, yeah, my client wasn't very happy. <laughs> they had uh, discovered that that wonderful well of endless jobs had surprisingly dried up. Many smart and talented people have this experience. Getting a job in their 20s was easy, almost too easy. It was so easy that they never bothered to think about a career plan or create an intentional career path. Employers were plentiful and the job market was bountiful. Heck, jobs were falling out of the sky, landing in their laps. It would always be like this, right? Wrong. The wild ride will come to an end sooner for some people than others. If you haven't mapped out a plan, put yourself in the driver's seat and controlled your path and destiny, you might find yourself kicked to the curb. I don't know if you've been paying attention or if you work in the tech industry, but there have been tens of thousands of people laid off recently. I think Google just laid off 12,000 people this week. It's hitting every company, big and small. The big corporations are no longer safe. And it's uh, it's kind of ugly. And it's not a lot of fun when you're growing older in your career because ageism is real, folks. I linked some information about that. There have been many cases of age discrimination, despite the fact that it's illegal, it's incredibly hard to prove. There have been a few rare cases. I think there was one at IBM where employees proved it and sued the company. But what usually happens is you simply notice people are no longer actively seeking you out and trying to recruit you for roles. And that's what some of my clients who are in their mid-40s and and approaching their 50s and in their 50s (laughs) have discovered. So sitting back and waiting to see what happens in your career, it's, it's not a great strategy. Do you see yourself as more of a driver or a passenger on your journey? Are you just along for the ride in your career? Do you feel like your career happened to you serendipitously? Many people do. Most people let their career just happen. Some people let their life just happen. They don't give much thought to planning their career path, looking for the best employers, and planning their future until something goes wrong. For example, suddenly they notice that they're passed over for a promotion, maybe more than once. It's taking longer to find new jobs. Their career growth is slowing down. Raises have flatlined. They're just getting cost of living increases, which aren't that great. And they're starting to feel unhappy, stressed, anxious. They're worried. Many people are unfulfilled. Eventually they ask themselves, is this really what I should be doing with my life? What's going wrong? How do I get back on a good path? Well, it starts with creating an intentional path. You got to do it. Think about it. Where do you want your life to be in 20 years? 
If you can envision that, is there a way that you could get there more quickly? And I want to stop for a moment and make something clear. I'm not suggesting that you create a rigid 30-year career path and follow it from the start to the bitter end. I mean, we don't do that anymore, right? If you are thoughtful and intentional during your journey, you will learn more about who you are and what you really want from life. You will change your mind and that's okay. It seems like I change my career plans and path about every 10 years, almost like clockwork. And while the thought of changing professions and careers may make some people feel stressed, I kind of find it exciting. So rather than selecting a point in the future that's attached to a specific profession or financial outcome, you know, oh, I must be a CEO, or I have to be a billionaire, I have to be a world-famous author. Instead, I prefer to ask people to envision a life they would find interesting, exciting, delightful, and fulfilling. Where do they see themselves living? How do they spend their days working? How do they spend time playing? Who are they spending their life with? When you have a plan in mind, you'll notice more opportunities that can help you with your journey. So I have some examples from uh, something that I call the Invincible Career Manual. I have a few screenshots in the newsletter. If you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com, this is issue 427. Um, you know, For example, trying to map you, what I call the toolbox of you, your talents, knowledge, skills, experience, etc., to your ideal role, like what you would really love to be doing. And then what's the gap? What is the gap between who you are right now and what you're capable of doing and what you really want to be doing? What's that gap and what can you do about it? So I created a, gosh, ended up being a little big, a 91 page invincible career manual that I use with my clients. We collaboratively complete it. We review it. We work through it over a period of weeks and months. And it's meant to evolve with you. And it's updated as your career grows and changes. I mean, this can be a living document you use for the rest of your career because things will continue to grow and change. So if you're listening to this and you're already one of my clients, just message me, contact me, most likely on Slack. And make sure you can find your customized copy of the manual in our shared Google Drive folder. So there'll be a copy of that for you. If you're a member of my career accelerator, I've talked about that many times. <laughs> I'll share a link to get your free copy of the manual in our private Slack channel. And if you are a premium subscriber to my newsletter, which is associated with this podcast, I'm going to share a link to get your free copy of the manual in our office hours channel on Slack. So now if you are a subscriber to the free version of my newsletter or just listening to this podcast, I have a link that you can use to get 20% off and download your own copy of the Invincible Career Manual and then edit it and fill it out and use it to your heart's content. So that is linked. If you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com, this is how to create an intentional career path instead of letting others determine your future, issue 427. There's a big button and a link where you can get 20% off and download it and start using it right away to plan your year and beyond. So uh, one way to do this is to design your ideal lifestyle. So thinking about this plan, and it's a kind of a different way to do it. It's designing what you want your life to be like, your lifestyle, and then find a career that enables that lifestyle. And it sounds crazy, but it is a different way to think about this. If you know how you want to live, why would you find a job and a career path that does not allow you to live that kind of life? You know, it doesn't give you that kind of freedom. If you want to travel, that's really important to you but you have a job that won't let you leave town, 
that's not a good match. <laughs> that's not a good match for your lifestyle. So I, I like to have this flipped around. And I'm not talking about the lifestyles of the rich and shameless. So don't be silly. I hear this all the time. Don't do this. Don't say, oh, well, I want to have a private island with my own jet and a yacht. Uh, therefore, I need a career that makes me a billionaire. Do you know what teeny tiny percentage of the population of this world reach that status of being a billionaire? Is that really what you want to plan? <laughs> I mean, it's great to be ambitious. You should be. I like ambition. I love it. But you got to be somewhat realistic too. So it's really just thinking about how do you want to spend your days? How do you want to structure your weeks, Sunday through Saturday? With whom do you want to spend most of your time? So family, friends, people you like working with. Where do you live? That's important. Where do you work? How do you keep yourself happy, healthy, and fulfilled? So it's not just about work. It's also about your personal life. This is life design, lifestyle design. So then I want people to craft, I guess, what you call your ideal job. So job crafting is the practice of changing your job to make it more engaging and meaningful. And people do this when they like their job, they like their employer, but they're not feeling challenged or fulfilled. So they'll craft their job to make it better and try to keep doing it. I also love to have my clients write their ideal job description as one way that they can pursue a role that would give them what they want for their career and life. So we focus on the job, the employer slash company, and their direct manager slash boss. So those three different factors. The first is the ideal job. So it's thinking about what is the ideal job that would be the right next step for your career. What is it? You know, is it a level up? Is it moving into management? Is it doing something a little bit different? How would you define your ideal role? What do you want to do more of in your next job? Like, what are you really good at doing and enjoy doing and you wish you could do more of it? What do you want to eliminate? What do you want to get rid of? You hate doing it. You're not good at doing it. You don't want to get good at doing it. So if you were going to write your own job description, what is, what are the roles, what are the responsibilities? What's the role? What are the responsibilities? And what's not on that list? What do you not want to do anymore? So I have a, a capture from the Invincible Career Manual, and it has things like the job title, you know, your compensation, your stock, your bonuses, other benefits and perks, responsibilities, how much autonomy you have, growth opportunities, what's the career path, what are you, what's your team like, the people working with you, what are the politics like, is it aligned with your values, you name it, you know, what do you want this job to be? The next is your ideal employer. So this is talking about the company. And defining your ideal employer sometimes feels like a scene from Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? The porridge scene, the chairs. You know, this is too hot. This is too cold. This is too soft. I mean, you've probably had enough jobs by now that you know what you want more of from an ideal employer and what you want to avoid going forward. You know, this corporation's too large. I don't like working for a company this big. This startup's too small. I don't like teeny tiny startups. Or I don't want to work for a company that's dependent on ad revenue. We saw what happened to Meta when their ad revenue got crushed last year. Uh, they had layoffs too. Uh, I don't enjoy working on enterprise software. Maybe you don't like that. I enjoy companies that sell direct to consumer. Maybe you love consumer-focused companies you know, companies, employers. And so I have another screenshot and it's just three columns. You know, it's thinking about the attributes of your next employer and it's a must have list. It has to have this or you're not even interested in that company. A nice to have list. It'd be great. That would be a bonus. It'd be a plus, but it's not a deal killer. And then the must avoid list. So if any of those things are on the attributes of a company, you're like, nope, forget it. You know, maybe anything that's over a 30-minute commute to the office, you're not going to do it anymore. It's like, forget it, not going to do it. 
or I don't want to work for a company that creates gambling software. Maybe you're really not into that. Don't want to work for that kind of company. Or you've read that the the company has a toxic CEO. That's on your no fly list, right? It's like, don't want it. Not going to go work for a company that has a toxic CEO. And there are some to do. So that's all about the company. And then the ideal boss. So think back and remember what you've appreciated about your past bosses. You've probably had some good bosses. You know, I've had, I've had some great bosses. I've had a few good ones, you know, mostly some average ones and some really bad ones. So I can remember what I appreciated about the good ones. You should also capture those toxic traits of your bad managers. What are the things that you really didn't like that were terrible? It was such a bad experience. So what does a great boss look like for you? And that's different for different people. What are the red flag issues that you want to avoid? How do you wish your future boss would behave? How do you wish they would treat you or treat the team? What's their background? You know, what is their profession, their educational background? And I have an example where you can essentially build a persona. If you're not familiar with that, it's supposed to be kind of an ideal representation that captures for in this case what an ideal manager would be so you you have a i even have a photo i have a name and it really is why not why not define your perfect boss you know who who are they what's their job title what's their background their profession their management style their leadership style how do they mentor people uh, their educational background how they give feedback what they think about meetings and how they hold meetings, their communication preferences, you name it, all kinds of stuff. So it's really about defining that ideal boss. And then as you're going forward, looking for people that come close to that and avoiding bosses and managers that are really different from your ideal. Then the last thing I would say is thinking about an ideal independent business. Like this would be a business you would start because sometimes the best job is the one you create. <laughs> and I reached that point in my career. You know, I've been working for, geez, I don't know, 30 years, been working a long time, 20 years in tech. And I eventually got tired of trying to fit myself into companies and organizations and leadership cultures that just weren't a good match for my personality, my values, my ambitions. And so I reached a point where I said, you know what? I'm done with the corporate world and I built my own business so I can create my own company with my own values. I can work with people I like to work with. So if that's something you're interested in doing one day, if that's in the back of your mind, you could check out my Invincible Solopreneurs newsletter. That's newsletter.invinciblesolopreneurs.com. It is linked in this newsletter as well that I'm talking about. And I'm also playing a live workshop later this year where I'm going to help people plan how they could define a business, design a business that is completely based on their existing talent, skills, knowledge, and experience. Because it's hard enough to start a business. It's almost impossible to succeed with a business where you don't already have the knowledge and skills to make it successful. I've watched people try. Most fail. It just doesn't work. So, I mean, this this kind of comes late. In, in this podcast episode, but the question you might be thinking is, why bother with a plan? Why bother? Who cares, right? Well, for most people, staying in a job for too long has diminishing returns. I mean, it's not like our parents and grandparents that worked somewhere their entire life or worked somewhere for 20, 30 years. We're not doing that. And and the world of work has changed. Staying somewhere for too long isn't great for your career, usually. On average, being employed at the same company for over two years will make you earn less over your lifetime by about 50% or more. Sad but true. Companies are not good about this. Rare individuals get promoted a lot. Rare individuals... Climb really high and they get great raises, but most people get okay raises and what they get within a company is less than the bump they would get if they went to a new company with a new job. 
I used to refer to that as the Silicon Valley promotion. You want to get promoted? You want to get a ton more money? <laughs> you went and got a new job. You know? I got, oh, I'm trying to remember what it was, like a 50% raise, 50% instead of the usual raise you get within a company of 5% or 10%. I got like a 50% raise going to another company, a smaller company even. Yeah, it accelerated my career. And so I learned that lesson. I never stayed anywhere longer than four years. Um, if you are not planning your own promotion path and taking control of making it happen, it's not good. I mean, you may not have a manager who's going to look out for you. They may not ensure that you get promoted when you deserve it. I ran into that. I've had great managers who looked out for me and mentored me and promoted me. And I had those that just kept saying, oh, maybe next time, you know, if you're not going to take control of it, you might be waiting a long time. I know I was talking with somebody not that long ago that said, well, I've been waiting six years for a promotion in the company. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> six years? That, that's ridiculous. If you know you need to move on to a better job, to keep growing your career and maximizing your lifetime earning potential, having a plan ensures you make a smart move. That's why you should bother with a plan. Too many people end up jumping out of the frying pan and right into the fire. They get into a worse situation. They don't do their due diligence. They don't do, they don't create a plan. They don't do background research on the company and the hiring manager. And they think on the surface, this looks great. And then six months into the new job, they're miserable. They're like, oh, this was a huge mistake. I have, I've done some damage to my career coming here. So a plan helps. A plan helps you do your homework and make a move to a great company, a great manager, which is really important. They can make or break your career and a great job. The right boss can accelerate your career. I've had some bosses that really boosted my career growth. The wrong boss can damage it and set you back for years. Sometimes it sets your career back for forever. <laughs> it's sad. The right company can set you up for the rest of your career. I often talk about how great working at Apple was for my career. That was a long time ago and people still say, oh, you worked at Apple. That's amazing. It has been great for my career. The wrong company can waste years of your time. Waste your time and lower your lifetime earning potential. And that happens too. And that's sad. Going to the wrong company can do some damage. The right company culture will let you have a great personal life too. They care about you. They want you to go home. They want you to be with your family and friends. The wrong company culture, burn you out. They'll chew you up and spit you out. And I, I worked at a company like that. <laughs> they were fine with me working 12, 14 hour days. Anyway, that wasn't so fun. Uh, there's another part of the manual where it's like a high level roadmap for the year. It's kind of nice to have this bird's eye view. So it goes January through December. And then you map out the tasks that you have planned to work on your career growth, to get a new job, to do whatever you need to do to get promoted, uh, tracking the progress you've made. Like what did you actually do? Did you update your portfolio? Did you update your resume? Have you started networking? Uh, milestones achieved, you know, maybe you got a promotion, maybe you got a new job and then some notes. There's a notes column too. So it's just a way to track your year and make sure you're making progress. A plan also helps you identify faster paths to your ideal end state. And if you don't know where you want to go, it's kind of impossible <laughs> to even notice or look for shortcuts. But when I was thinking, for example, about my ideal end state, I kind of took an al a strange alternative approach to mapping it. I did the lifestyle design thing and I thought about some really out of the box creative ways that I could make a living and have that lifestyle. And I found a shortcut. I found a shortcut to build my own business and I got the life I want decades ahead of where my traditional career was taking me. It was going to take a lot longer to get to the point where I could retire and move to live where I want to live and 
do what I want to do with my life. And uh, because of this planning, because of me thinking about this ideal end state, I'm now the happiest I've ever been in my career, in my life. And I just want to wrap this up just talking about this concept of being in the driver's seat. Drivers get what they want out of life. If you're a driver, you probably know this. If you're not, you're probably seeing people do it. Drivers get what they want out of life. Passengers end up where someone else decides to drop them off. They get where the driver wants them to go. That happens to all too many people. And those people who may seem happier and more successful than you aren't better than you. They're just more confident. They know what they want and they pursue it with a vengeance. You don't have to be a passenger. Don't let anyone stop you from climbing into the driver's seat of your career in life. I mean, it's not like you get a second chance to play this game. You get one life, one life. Chart a course to end up where you want to go. Until next time, I wish you the best of luck in becoming an opportunity magnet for the best things in life.